Hi everyone, it's Louise. Welcome back to another video of mine. It's good to see you here and yes, this is a video about a watercolour brush. You've probably seen a heap of videos about brushes, but this is my first one. I get asked about brushes all the time. So if you are a beginner painter or if you're on a budget, I want to show you a little watercolour brush that won't break the bank. These are Jackson's Studio Synthetic watercolour brushes and Franz and Maggie from Jackson's Australia sent them to me to try out. These are series 505. I want you to know that this is not a sponsored video. This is just my honest opinion about them. Now I like to use sable brushes so let's just say I wasn't expecting too much from these because they're synthetic and they're not very expensive. But after using them I have to say I'm quite impressed. I did a few quick tests in my watercolour journal to get a feel for them and then I painted this rose painting using them. All right, qualities of a round brush that I look for. It's got to have a clean shape, a pointy tip and no stray hairs when it's wet. Okay, that's a tick from me. Brush capacity, it's got to be thirsty. It's got to suck up that paint and water and hang on to it in the bristles until I'm ready for it to release on the paper. When you use a natural hair brush, you should notice that they have excellent water retention. They can hold a lot of water or paint, which lets you paint longer without constantly having to dip your brush back into the paint. I took one of my sable brushes and one of the synthetic brushes and I rinsed them in my water jar and held them up to let them drip. And I found that the synthetic brush held onto the water as much as the sable brush did. Which brings me to paint release. When you are painting, you want your brush to release the paint in a constant and steady flow. Before I painted the rose, I made a few marks with one of the brushes in my watercolour journal, just to get a feel for it. And I found that it released the paint consistently and evenly. As a comparison, I made the same marks with one of my other synthetic brushes that I like using. This is a Da Vinci Casaneo series 5598. It's a bit more than twice the cost of the Jackson Studio brush. Then I combined those two strokes in one. So I started up on the tip and I pushed down to flatten the bristles and then came back up on the tip. And there's a small amount of excess paint there where I pushed down on the bristles but not enough for me to be concerned about. Then I did the same thing with the Casaneo brush to compare it and it didn't show the excess paint pooling. I painted a really quick continuous swirly stroke up on the tip of the brush just to see how it maneuvers over the paper. And I did the same thing with the Casaneo brush. And because the bristles on this brush are a little softer, they separated on the tip. You can see just here where the bristles separated. I was able to paint a nice clean flat wash on dry paper with the Jackson's Studio brush. The paint flowed evenly off the brush and onto the paper without creating streaks of colour or pools of excess paint. You might hear some artists say a good brush has got good snap. That means the brush is able to spring back to its original shape after being bent or pressed against a surface. The reason you want a watercolour brush to have good snap is because it allows for greater control over your brush strokes. And a brush with good snap feels good and more responsive when you're painting. I found these brushes to have good snap. The last thing I like about these brushes is that they, they feel good in my hand. They're a good weight, not too heavy, not too light. And the handle is the right thickness. I've used some brushes where the handle has felt a bit too thick and others where the handle has felt too thin. And this one feels just right. They have short, polished black handles, so they look good too. The best way to get a feel for a particular brush is to do a painting with them. So I use them to paint this rose. Here I've wet the paper with the number 12 brush and I'm painting wet on wet, allowing the paint to flow over the wet paper. Then I switch to the number 8 brush to take the paint closer to the adjoining petal. 
and I felt that I had control over the brushes as soon as I started painting with them. I used the number 12 brush to paint the water onto the paper because I can paint it on there quicker with the larger brush. I'm using Arsh Cold Press watercolour paper here too. And then I swap to the smaller number 8 brush to apply the paint. That gives me a bit more precision along the edge here and it's not depositing too much paint on the paper. This flower has got little pink edges so I don't want to completely cover it with pink paint. I'm going to try and leave the white of the paper showing as much as I can. When the paint was in place along the edge I used a brush to flick some of it back over the white area. A little bit of yellow here on the inner edge. And then I used the little number one brush and I painted some more of the pink paint along the edge. This is Schmincke's Ruby Red that I'm using. This far into the painting I was more than happy with the brushes. They responded to my movements. I could manoeuvre them easily over the curves and edges of each petal. Here I've wet the paper with the large number 12 brush and I'm painting some green onto the wet paper. Normally when I use a brush for the first time it takes me a while to get used to it. New brush will often feel awkward in my hand but I didn't feel that with these brushes. They seem to be easy to control and I found that they released the paint efficiently. Here I've allowed that green wash on the background to dry and I'm layering over the top of it. And I found that the bristles of these brushes maintained their shape as I was painting, which is really important. I like my round brushes to have fine points, particularly when I'm painting detail like this. And I've tried other brushes for the first time and I found that the bristles on the tip of the brush separated while I was painting, which is really annoying when you're trying to paint precisely. But I'm happy to say that the tips of these brushes stayed together while I was painting. How long these brushes will retain their points will depend on the frequency and intensity of use and how you look after them. I replace synthetic brushes much more often than natural hair brushes, but these are affordable so it's less of a burden to replace them. So I was really happy with how they performed. If you are a beginner or you're on a budget, you might consider trying these brushes. I will be recommending them to beginners who paint with me. If you would like to paint with me, you can subscribe on Patreon or you can purchase individual classes and have lifetime access to them. I've put links in the description of this video so you can find out more about them. I'm going to repaint this little rose and film it all for a full length tutorial because a few people have asked me if I would. That's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. That won't bake, bake the brink. No, it's got B roll. It's got B roll. Oh. Yep, rub show on the brushes to try them out. Should we do it all again? Do you like my new haircut? No, Carl's shaking his head. Carl's, Carl's shaking his head. Does that mean you don't like it, Carl?